Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice tea. Or the wind tunnel, as it should be more appropriately described and known as. Okay guys, what I want to talk about today is just maybe revisit the past a little bit. And for you guys that don't know, I was a big uh, fan of Mo Normans for a long time and had the Mo Norman teaching facility um, in Australia, one of them for, for a long time. And I, I just believe that it was a fantastic system for consistency and accuracy. Okay, it wasn't an easy system to learn because it is so different and for a lot of people it's very restrictive in terms of a feel. So, but the good thing about it, and, and something maybe we can transpose over onto our normal golf swings, is the stability factor and the lack of excessive rotation in the golf swing. Guys, when you have the hips wanting to rotate or the midriff or even the lower leg or whatever, that, that's good for producing power and it's okay for sequencing. If you were a very, very accomplished player and you hit a lot of golf balls and you've had that swing for a long time. But it's very difficult for the rank and file player who doesn't get a chance to practice much uh, or doesn't practice at all. It's very difficult for them because the amount of hip rotation, trail leg drive, lead knee, lead, torso movement, all that type of stuff, it's very hard to coordinate on a day-to-day -day basis. The good thing about Mo Norman swing, and Mo said, you know, he, he used the phrase or the description on occasion that, you know, he had less moving parts than anybody else and that's why his golf swing was, was more efficient. Well, he had the same amount of moving parts as anybody else. And, and I actually asked him one day, I said, well, Mo, tell me what part of your golf swing um, is, is removed compared to everybody else's. And he really couldn't answer it. And I said, so my, my analysis of what you're saying is that you've still got the same amount of moving parts, but they don't move as much. And he agreed with that. And by that, guys, what we mean is that because Mo had a you know, fairly wide stance, he was hunkered down, he had, he had this single axis formation in the golf swing established. He didn't have two axis, arm axis, club axis. And coming into the ball, they will always, because of centripetal inertia, they will always form one axis. They will go from two axis to one axis. You, you just never see anybody at impact like that. They're always like that in any golf swing because that centripetal inertia just straightens out those angles. And Mo knew that. So what Mo did was <laughs> he just took that variable out straight away by setting up like that without that angle there. He just... And, and his, his um, checkpoint was the shaft being in line with the trail forearm, single axis here. In a normal golf swing, we've got the, the shaft coming up here and the arm there, so we have two axes. So it's referred to as a single plane swing a lot of the time, but it's more a single axis golf swing than a single plane swing. Because this, the plane does change on the backswing, as all golf swings. If, if you were having a single plane golf swing and you were there, and, and, and it was going to be a single plane swing, it would have to be on that that angle right throughout the backswing. Now nobody swings like that. Everybody will swing above that plane in the backswing. They go to here, the club moves up above that plane and then it comes back down onto that plane. To stay on that plane, you would have to take the club around the body like that without any lifting. There's always a lift element that's caused by the rotation. And Mo's got that in his swing like everybody else has. But guys, what I think, even in any golf swing, doesn't matter what type of golf swing you have, and today, just for fun, I've gone back to my 
original split grip, the old Mo Norman. Well, he never used that when he played, but he did when he went to natural golf. Split grip here. People called, you know, basically baseball grip type thing. But it's just split grip. It's not overlapping. It's not interlapping. Just going back to there just for nostalgic <laughs> reasons. And for people that have a little bit of trouble with, with what I call trail hand flap, that's not a bad grip to have. Not a bad grip to have. So what I'm saying here, guys, for any golf swing, and if you have a conventional ball position, which essentially which Mo did, even though he started back here, he was into his golf swing here. He never just put the club back there, guys, like that. If you watch him, if you stood behind Mo Norman and you looked at him here, you'd say he's aiming way right because his shoulders are pointing over there. But that's only because he's into his turn. He, he, he's into the turn. He doesn't just take the club back there and leave his shoulders square. He moves his shoulders as well. And that was very confusing for a lot of spectators because they all said, Mo Norman aims right and he pulls the ball. We never did that at all. That's another story. So guys, what I'm suggesting is that if you can adopt some of the good things of Mo Norman's golf swing, and that was his stability, and it had a fairly wide stance, or very wide stance, but Mo Norman had straight legs at address. He was a tripod. I never did that. He, ha he was a tripod. And I said to him, Mo, why do you have your legs straight like that? And he said, because if you have your legs bent at address, invariably you will stand up. They will straighten. He said, I have mine straight at address because I can't straighten them anymore and I have to actually flex them a little bit coming into the ball. And that's how he got that lateral slide into the ball. He went from there to here and then he just... He just sat into his knees here. And guys, that's what he tried to do in the golf swing. Now you don't have to do that. But the takeaway of this is that what Mo Norman did better than anybody else was he was very, very stable at impact. And there was none of this. There was no driving off the trail foot. There was no standing up with the lead foot. Both feet were on the ground when he hit it. And his hips were square to a little bit closed when he hit it. So when you've got that geometry in a golf swing, <laughs> you've got to be pretty accurate because the club just doesn't get offline. I mean, if I'm here, look, nothing's happened. All I've done is take my arms back and I've just moved here. I've just moved a little bit of my lead leg, stay there, trail foot's on the ground, club's gone past here. And we saw Mo here, then he lifts the trail foot and comes through to finish because that was, that's the inertia of the golf swing. So I'm not saying... <laughs> set up to hit the ball and then stay there when you hit it and finish because you won't hit it at all. You have to have some release of energy. So, all right, <laughs> going with normal tradition, I never warm up guys and invariably whenever I'm talking to people or talking about the golf swing, I usually always hit the driver first. I never warm up. Never warm up. We used to have a a great athletics coach here in Australia, an Olympic trainer called Percy Cerati, Cerati. And I met him once and, and I said, Percy, you always just take the boys off in the sand hills, no warm ups or anything. And I said, these are world class athletes, no warm up. He came over and he poked me in the chest and he said, he said, John, John, do you ever see a cheetah warm up before it chases the antelope? He said, if that cheetah was warming up, the antelope would be gone. He said he'd starve to death. You don't see cheetahs warm up before they they run. Now that was, Percy was a little way out. But I've never ever felt that I had to warm up with, with the golf swing. That was just a side story. Yeah, you never see the antelope stretching or warming up. So guys, this is what conven conventional, conventional golf, right? to show you conventional golf swing with all the motion in it. And I can do it pretty well. And do it okay. And I get pretty good accuracy. I can hit off the front foot, hit off the trail foot, it doesn't matter. But for the exercise here, we'll hit it from a conventional position here. And, and just, just a conventional golf swing. Now there's first shot of the day. I'm aiming up there between 
some fence posts up there, 20 yards wide, and that ball's just gone in there. It's just gone in there, guys. That's a conventional golf swing. I'll do another one. But look how much body action's taking place. Now what happens there, <laughs> I get in between Mo swing, what I'm talking about in Mo swing and a conventional swing. I'll just let the body release for a conventional swing. I mean that, that's more Mo swing than a standard swing, conventional swing. So we just let that whole trail side release and we spin around. Now with Mo swing, The feet were down, the leg, trail leg was in behind the lead leg, and he just fired his arms past the ball. Now this is a forward ball position, but it's the same move guys. Until after the ball's gone. So we're very stable at impact. Very stable at impact. Got a headwind, cross headwind. So all I'm saying is in its standard swing, just try and be there when you hit it. Have that trail leg in behind that lead leg and just let your arms accelerate past your body. Now that's what we call cross-programming. <laughs> the old program comes in, which is the release. Okay, keep the feet down, Jade. Now that's the feet down, stabilising the arm swing. That's all that is, guys. Feet down, stabilising the arm swing. Hard for me to do it now because I haven't done it for so long. And the old pro, uh, normal golf swing comes in. It's very simplistic. Those balls are just dead straight. I mean dead straight. So the story is, if we can just be here when we hit it, not here, as soon as we drive the trail leg and the hip, it's going to move the torso, going to move the shoulders. Going to change the delivery path into the ball, unless you're an extremely good ball striker. Or you're very, very flexible. And then you can keep your shoulders closed, and you can have your hips out of the way like the ladies do. Or the top line tour players who, are, who do a lot of uh, plyometric training. Have to check the audio guys. So many times these days I do a video and I just completely forget. Alright, one more. So the main message is stabilize the lower body, just take the club back. See how those feet are on the ground? See how I'm sitting into the shot? I'm using a bit of ground force. A little bit of ground force. And they're just great shots. We've got a terrific headwind, crosswind. They're just going up there and just falling off as the wind picks it up at the end. Now how long you stay down and how much you release after the shot is very, very individual and personal. Now that's just like a tripod like the Iron Byron. It doesn't move the lower body. It doesn't move the swing rotation axis. It just swings the arms or the uh, you know the, the hitting mechanism past the structure of Iron Byron. 
Stasel. Now I'll just hit a normal shot with normal rotation. See I'm over here? Now I can get away with that because I've hit a lot of balls. But if I get over there just a tad too early, or I just have a little bit too much rotation, you're just going to be delivering the, the golf club face to the ball uh, differently every time. Whereas the feet are down here, you're basically delivering square on all the time, and the shoulders are square. All right, now we're warmed up. Let's see if we can hit one. Now it's not my Norman. All it is is swing without a lot of rotation in it. That's all it is, guys. So the main message, try and keep your feet down a little longer. We'll just hit a couple of lines. Just keep the feet down a little longer. I've got my hands up a little bit and not down here. <coughs> Got four on here, guys. It's just perfect golf shot. That's just a free arm swing. The body's just reacting to the through force after the shot and just going around after the shot, but at impact, the feet are down. you're playing channel lock or snap lock you could do exactly the same I'll hit this off the trail foot but with the feet down oh, oh that is just such a beautiful powerful golf shot and even if you want to play just normal channel lock guys or or uh, snap lock, which is the quick channel lock, or the yogi lock. Just keep that trial foot down, keep that lead knee forward, and you get that ball flight. That's just something else. Trial foot back here, trial foot down. Contact's fantastic. I mean, really fantastic. Blue sky, I might do a bit of down range, have to put the camera in a different place. Might hit a few shots down range on the next video. But so I've got my feet down guys, and I've got the ball way back. Huh. Channel lock position. Yeah. Keep it down, Jad. Now that's way down after impact. Way down after impact. Wind is super strong. So guys, the message is just try and eliminate a little bit of the body and the extraneous movement of those components, the hips and torso and shoulder and what have you. What, it'll help you enormously in your pitching as well. Because the more stable you are in pitching, the better off you'll be. Okay, guys, I'll see if I can hit a couple of shots down range. Dead into the wind here. But with that blue sky, we might see some good ball fly. Okay. If not, guys, we'll do some more tomorrow.